Today on Console Classics, I want to talk about the third installment of Resident Evil. Resident Evil 3 debuted in 1999 for PlayStation and was truly a masterpiece. It starred Jill Valentine from the first game as she ran around the streets of an overrun Raccoon City being constantly followed by the Nemesis, a new tyrant that was programmed to kill the remaining Stars members left in the city. The game takes place days before, during, and after Part 2 but we don't get to see Leon or Claire at all. So the game starts out with Jill jumping out of a burning building. She meets up with a guy in a warehouse who barricades himself inside of a trailer and refuses to come out. Jill then heads to the RPD, but finds Brad at a bar on the way. He was the pilot from the first game. He tells her that there's a monster in the city looking for them. And after that, they are confronted by the monster, Nemesis, in the courtyard of the police station, with Nemesis killing Brad. A quick note, in RE2, since technically that happens after this, if you don't pick up any items on the way to the RPD in the beginning of the game, down the stairwell, you'll find a zombie Brad, who if you kill, drops a special key that unlocks this cabinet in this room, which is in this hallway, just for extra costumes and stuff. So, now you know. Okay, so now, here's your first choice prompt that appears. Throughout the game, especially when confronted by Nemesis, a choice will pop up and you can pick what you want to do. These choices will slightly alter the storyline of the game as you go. If you decide to fight Nemesis each time, when you down him, he'll drop a part of a special gun that is pretty powerful when it's assembled. So in the RPD, Jill finds nothing but more zombies. No liquors in this game, though. She then heads to a restaurant where she meets Carlos and is yet again confronted by this asshole. He just really doesn't take no for an answer, I guess. Carlos tells her that he's part of the UBCS, a team set up by Umbrella to aid survivors in the city. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's a ploy of some sort. They have a base set up in City Hall in a train car, but they need to collect the components to get it up and moving again so they can head to the clock tower to be extracted. You spend time wandering around collecting all these items to solve puzzles to obtain more items. Jill meets Nikolai, the leader of the UBCS unit. He's kind of a douche and he's a bit shady. After you fight Nemesis again a couple times and collect the necessary pieces of the train, you head to the clock tower. But there may be a stowaway on your journey. Yup. Nemesis boards the train and tries to kill you, but Mikhail, another member of the team, jumps in front of you and blows Nemesis to hell. So there, he's dead. Alright, well that was a short game, cool. So because of the explosion, the train derails and crashes at the clock tower. Well, at least you made it there. And help has finally arrived. You're saved. Down here! It's finally over. Oh, wait a minute, I spoke too soon. So after the fuckery, you fight Nemesis again and get infected, which puts you out for days. This is where Resident Evil 2 takes place. And so now you play as Carlos, and your objective is to go to the hospital and create a vaccine for Jill. After plowing through a shit ton of hunters, you bring the vaccine back to her, and she's good to go. And now you have to find another way out. And of course, here he is again. I swear, it's getting old now, bro. Just stop. So you make your way through the park and find Nikolai doing some shady shit in a cabin. You find out that he's another antagonist of the game, and that the city's about to be wiped off the map with a nuke. You try to chase him, but are cut off by a giant worm. So after the graveyard, you're visited by your old pal Nemesis, who has upgraded to a bare chest with more tentacles hanging out. Get past him to enter... The DEAD FACTORY! In the factory, you're confronted by Nikolai again, this time having a shootout and him running away. He locks the door behind him, and that appears to be the only way forward. So, you'll need a keycar to get through. But where is it? You proceed through a door that leads to what looks like a trash room, and you'll never guess who's waiting in there. 
So after the fight, Nemesis gets dumped in what I assume is acid, and oh look, the key card! Yippee! Take it back to the locked door, and then let's end this shit. So just when you think it's over, Nikolai shows back up and tries to gun you down in a helicopter, because plot. You can choose to let him live, but nah, fuck him. Proceed down the ladder to freedom. Down here you'll encounter a building guarded by a dead Mr. X, and then it's filled with more dead tyrants. What the hell happened in here? Right when you get your bearings, though, Nemesis is back. This time he's a mutated blob with spines and tumors. You have to connect three batteries that operate a special laser called a rail cannon, and then hit him one good time. After he's dead, empty a magnum into his corpse for good measure, and then head out. You're greeted by Carlos and get on a helicopter flown by... Wait a minute, is that Barry? You leave the city just as the nuke arrives and then... The end. So, this was a decent game. I mean, Nemesis was literally at every corner of the city waiting for you. It really heightened the suspense. I hope the new one's the same way. Alright guys, well, this has been Console Classics. I'll see you on the next one.